Welcome back to the show. We are so excited to be joined by Erin Capulli, who is here, the founder of PA Woods and Forests. And you brought some different critters along with you. Thanks so much for coming. You're welcome. That's right. I have a good list here of different critters that we're going to be going through. I brought carnivorous plants, a gray tree frog, and a North American giant millipede. Very oh, cool stuff. So I was just asking in the break, what is a millipede? Well, a millipede is a little different from a centipede because it has more legs, it's a lot slower, and it's not carnivorous. Okay. So let me pull it out here. This is one of the creatures that we actually prioritize with our nonprofit. We want to make sure that we're conserving a lot of the overlooked species mm -hmm. in your own backyard. Okay. So, pull. There she is. so we can find these in our own backyard here yeah. in the 814? A lot of bike trails is where they'll breed. Oh, wow. so okay. Let me just show you guys. And you actually um, host these little walks where you guys go out and, and get these, right? Yeah, we have millipede roundups where we pull them off of the trails, and then I guide a hike, and I explain the importance of what they're doing for our ecosystem by eating decaying plant matter, dead animals, fungus. So what does this one eat? It eats all of that. It'll eat dead okay. animals and fungus and are everything. Are they safe to hold? Well, they are, but if you don't know how to handle them, <laughs> oh, like I'm, I'm doing here, I'm they'll sure secrete a yellow, it's like an acid, and that's to deter predators. So oh. that's why I'm being very gentle. You wow. want to give the creature its space. Let, um, is, do you know if that's male or female? I believe it to be a female because the segments on their body as they get older sort of determines for us how we can tell what their age is and also what... Uh, their gender is. So it's moving a little slow because it's cooler <laughs> out today, which is nice. Oh, so when it's warm, they kind of have a little, oh, they're faster, a little yeah. pep in their step. I've seen like a normal millipede. Is that right? That is so neat. Do you this mean smaller millipedes? Yeah, the smaller, smaller ones. Some of them. <laughs> so, well, the, I mean, most people think of them as a smaller type of invertebrate. But yeah, this is the giant common American millipede. And it's found in Pennsylvania. It's really exciting to see them. Like I said, a lot of people wouldn't bat an eye because it's common, but we see the significance of it in all of these creatures that we feature on PA Woods mm -hmm. and Forests. So that's why we brought them here and why we want to give them a spotlight. And I'm sure they're easy to get hit by a bike on yeah. those. I'm from Wellsboro. You've seen them out there on those bike trails. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you wouldn't even think twice. No, You no. know, as you're booking through there. Well, they kind of blend in really well. They're camouflage. Yeah, yeah, they have very cryptic coloration, and that's to blend in from predators. Doesn't always work, but it, it helps. Yeah, they're pretty long, too, I noticed. Yeah, like four <laughs> inches. Wow. Okay, tell me, what makes a carnivorous plant? So I can pull it out. Wow. This is, I'll sit on Look top of that. the millipede enclosure okay. here. Okay. So this is a northern purple pitcher plant. That's the plant with the tubes and it eats animals and invertebrates and the animals that it eats in Pennsylvania are like salamanders for the most part. The and plant? Then, yeah. Yes. Eats salamanders. It can eat salamanders. How? So the traps here, if you would imagine a cup filling up with water, so there's enzymes in that cup and as they fall into it, then they get stuck in the, in the pitcher traps and then they die. They either drown or they get taken out from the enzymes. There's a lot of ways, but it breaks them down and eats them. So these plants don't have teeth. No, it's not, no. Okay. No. So, but it's called a pitcher plant. <laughs> yeah. A pitcher plant. That makes yeah. sense. These look like little pitchers and they kind of hold the water and, yeah. the, and the animal that it eats or the yeah. insect. Yep, That's exactly. And they're Whoa. native to Pennsylvania. Yeah, they're harder to find in the southwestern region though. We've been searching for them a lot. We've only come up with some locations in Somerset and Fayette counties, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's likely that they were around in multiple counties and we just have lost them from development and other things like that. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more common in like central PA and eastern PA, but in southwestern PA, they're a lot harder to come by. And that's your mission too with this whole organization and nonprofit yeah. is to just make educate people about the conservation of these plants and these insects because you go herping. Yeah. Yeah, we should probably explain <laughs> to people what that, that is. It goes herping. <laughs> yeah. Tell everyone. Well, uh, herping is searching for reptiles and amphibians and going out on road cruises and all types of other things. But yeah, actually interacting with the frogs How in the wild. How did you get that name, Erin? Herptology. Oh, herptology. So herptofauna is like the study of reptiles and amphibians. Wow. So yeah, it, it has a very interesting name because a lot of people don't think it means what it actually does. <laughs> you well, know, when I first heard it, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't what's know if that? I want to get into that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, but oh, that's, that's fascinating. Can you introduce us to Meredith? I can. 
I want to tell you guys something really fascinating, though, that links Hi. Meredith with this carnivorous plant. So a lot of people don't know this, but pitcher plants actually uh, have a symbiotic relationship with frogs. So frogs can live inside, like hang out and chill inside the pitcher plant, and they won't die. But salamanders that are also amphibians will die. So mm. they've evolved together in a way that the frogs won't get hurt. And in some states, actually, the frogs can breed inside the pitcher plants, and the tadpoles can develop and wow. everything. Yeah. That's fascinating. So Morgan, so you're coexist. going. Morgan's going to oh, get yeah. over her fear yeah. of frogs. Okay. And t so you said frogs actually, they breathe the water? Well, so what I mean is they'll sit in a water area and they'll hydrate through their skin. They actually hydrate through a pouch in between their back legs. So uh, that's, for the most part, what they're doing. Oh they don't actually goodness. drink water so like a dog does through their mouth. They don't lap it up. But yeah, this is Meredith. She's an eastern gray tree frog. She was rescued. Let me turn her around so you can get a better oh. shot of her. Okay, I got a little scared. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Morgan, you ready? She's, I'm she's here very for this. tame. I'm here for a moral so support. So what I want you to do okay. is kind of just gently put your hand underneath her. From start the back or the front? Should yeah, start from the front. But no okay. gripping, kind of. Yeah, just I want to show you how I handle her because if you handle her and you grab her, should I? Then yeah, go ahead. Measure just, a little. She might. Oh, <gasps> that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Girl. Oh, oh, she's <laughs> right on the water bottle. Well, you can see that she's a tree frog. Let me she, look, look at her me. clinging onto that. Yeah. Okay, there's her so big cool. debut. Let's get a close up of she's Meredith. Like King Kong on the Hi, side of Meredith. Her thing. She does she's look like King Kong. So cute, and her her coloring is just incredible. Yeah. So, oh, that's just <laughs> fascinating. So. Look at her. Are you gonna feed her? Are you gonna yeah. feed her? You said she's a little hungry. Well, yeah, she's I've trained. Ready to eat. I've trained her to take food by hand. So we'll see how this goes. She should be very aggressive with the food. Let's watch. I have and a lot of video. There we go. Already. What are you feeding her? So this is definitely not a staple food. This is wax worms. It's more for them to gain weight. Something like a treat. So you can imagine potato chips and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'll just throw another one in real quick. Just want to put it in front of her. I've trained how her. How sweet. See, look at that. She just takes them. Oh my no, no, gosh, no, wait. No, no. Do that we is get adorable. A, can we even get a little closer on her? <laughs> like, I want to see her little mouth. <laughs> yeah, I think she still has some of it. There we go. She's just hanging out. Wait, this is oh really cute. How'd she get her name, Erin? Well, uh, my girlfriend likes Grey's Anatomy, and I said, <laughs> well, do you want to name her? And she's like, Meredith. And I was like, all right, she's Meredith. So that's how she got her name. <laughs> Uh, so you think she's a little jumpy? You don't think Morgan will be able to give her a go? I think we could, if you want, yeah. Okay. So what you want to do? Girl. Yeah, just keep it okay. right there. Let's so see. we're wearing I the gloves. The, I'm over here like this. We're wearing the gloves so that way, if anybody has anything on their skin, it doesn't get into the frog because they take, like I said, the hydrogen. They take they take water through their skin, but they also take pollutants and chemicals. Mm -hmm. So if we had lotion or anything like that on our skin, then they would take that in as well through their pores. And your mission is to help conserve these gray tree frogs. What can we do here as, uh, you know, a resident of Central PA? Yeah, they're not listed either as abundant or endangered. They're kind of in a gray area, so a lot of the work we're doing is documenting them and trying to get them seen in different counties so that way they could be listed as an abundant frog. We only would have, I think, eight if they're included. Currently we have seven out of about 17 that are listed in the state. So anything for wow. progress is good progress. What are the best ways for people that want to help PA Woods and Forests? Well, you guys, if you would like to subscribe on the YouTube channel, follow us on the website, especially the website when we talk about our Ooh. events. She's behaving for you. But <laughs> we have a lot of events where we do frog walks, where I'll take people out, millipede roundups, and you'll get a chance to see a lot of what we do. This is actually so a setup of a critter talk. So I actually take this show on the road and present this to whoever will have me libraries maybe, churches maybe a local school too. local yeah. school yeah okay. hoping to work with blair county at some perfect. point perfect erin yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show morgan you accomplished it yes. let's get another little close-up of meredith because so she's the star of the show thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for your education and for sharing it with our viewers today we'll have all the details on how you can get to know more about pa woods and forests over on wtaj.com we'll be back after a quick break